We're continuing on Shukharu for Achaim, Simanun Aleph, with Mishnah Brura. We are in the middle of Sif Dalit. We spoke about the fact that the person cannot pause or talk in the middle of Psukhe de Zimra. So from the moment you start Baruch Sha'amar until after Ishtabach, says the Shukhar Aruch, is Asur. Really, until Shemona Yisrael at the end, you cannot talk. But says the Rama, even for Dvar Mitzvah, you cannot speak with him by Rosh Hashanah Now, in next Simanim, the Rama is going to discuss whether or not after Ishtabach, before you start the Bracha Yotzer, in that period, if you could speak for Sorech Mitzvah, for a need of Mitzvah, we're going to discuss that. But nevertheless, for sure, between Baruch Shamar and Ishtabach, a person cannot speak. But we spoke about things that are Sorech Mitzvah. And the Mishnah Bura over here writes, Sorech Mitzvah, Pashut de Mitiare Shavor, Shavor Zman Kriyat Shema, Kodem Shiagia Likrota, Besedrat Fila, the Shachach Leomra Kodem Baruch Shamar, Mutalo Lafsik for Likrota. It is Pashut, is a symbol. Imagine this happens often, actually, that you start Baruch Shammah Shabbat morning, the minyan starts late, and the Gabai makes an announcement, says, well, Rabotai, if you have not said Shema yet, the time of Shema is passing. Even though that you have maybe still time for the Zman of the Vilna Gaon, but the Zman of Magen Avraham is passing, which the Minaga the Sfaradim has been like the Magen Avraham, so even though that you've started Baruch Shema, you can't say, gee, I started, I wish I knew beforehand. Now I forgot to say Shema. I started Baruch Shema. I can't be mafsik. So let me quickly, quickly say Shabbat. Maybe I'm going to get to it. So the Mishnah Bura, if you're not going to make it on time for, um, for the Shema with the Tzibur, it's going to be later than the time of Shema. It's Pashut that you stop in between Psukel Zimra and you say Shema to be Yotzeh. In, the, in on, on time, a proper time. Achachamavadiyah, from this language of Mishnah Burak, he says, even if you have safek, even if it's not for sure, but you have safek that the time of Shema is going to pass, still you could stop and say Shema in order to make sure that you have covered all your bases. Says the Mishnah Burak, <laughs> Another case that happens often is you come to Shul, you're a little late, and you start Baruch Shama, and you say, Oh my gosh, I forgot to say Birkata Shachar, so I haven't even said Birkata Torah yet. Now, can you continue the Tfilah without Birkata Torah? We had a discussion about this whether or not a person could say Sukim Der Tfilah without Birkata Torah, and we mentioned that even though that there's a discussion about what Maran holds. That's only before we saw the Chuvot of the Rambam, because they didn't have, in the time of Maran, and even way after that, they didn't have access to the Chuvot of Perador from Rambam. Now we Baruch Hashem do. And Rambam writes black and white clearly that you can't even say any psukim, even one pasuk, even if it's Der Tfilah, that you're doing it in context of Tfilah, not learning Torah still, you can't say it without Birkat Torah. So hence, the halacha would be, that if you remember after Baruch Shama that I haven't said Birkat Torah, you pause, and you say Birkat Torah right there, and then you continue. So even though that you cannot stop for other things, these things that are, you know, it's an avera to wait until the time of Shema passes. It's an avera to say, Suki, without having said Birkat Torah, hence, you stop and you say, Birkat Torah, you stop and you say Shema, to cover all your bases, says the Mishnah Rav. The Yeshu Omrim da Asur lo marafir pesukah zimra kodem birkat Torah. En likrod the Sefer Torah lachatkila mishu omed b'emsa pesukah zimra. Now imagine that you're the Gabai, and you have a tefila that finished early, and some people come late. Rachman litzdan. It doesn't never happens in this community, of course, right? But the Gabai wants to call somebody up. So if he knows that he's in the middle of Sukkot Zimra, should not call him up. 
his mills, but imagine the Gabbai didn't realize and already called this guy by name, Yamot Peloni Ben Peloni. So he called him up already, and then you go to him and he shows you, mm, mm, mm. So what's the halacha? He called him up already. Can he stop Zimra and go up and get the Aliyah? And then take it, take it outside in the street with the Gabai afterwards? Or can he just say, you know what? You called my name. Usually when you call your name, you don't want to not go up. But maybe it's Asur to go up and you should just pass on the Birkata Torah in order to not pause. Says the Mishnah Burah, if there is another Kohen, you don't call a Kohen that's in between. Because if you have no other Kohen, and Rabbi Yosef happens to be the only Kohen over there, even though that's in Sukkot Zimra, the Gabbai could still call him up. So you don't have any other Kohanim. So you pause, you go up. Right? Imagine the Chazan or the Balkore or the Gabai forgot his name. Yamod. And said, What's your name? So now if you don't answer him, it's not Kavod. Says the Mishnah, bro, you could even say your name to him. Next if in Shaharok, you'll see that in Psukeda Zimra, you could stop Mipeneha Kavod. Or something that's considered respect for another person, Mipeneha Kavod, you could stop. So here you're gonna be disgracing the person if he's asking you publicly and you're not answering him, right? And it's gonna feel like uh, you know, very cheap and in front of people, it's embarrassing that he forgot to ask you. So to answer him, says the Mishnah Bura. Says um, the Mishnah Bura. You can't stop to say, to ask the Hazan to say Mishnah for you. That you cannot do. But you could say your name if he asks you. And if you are almost by a chapter, by the end of a chapter, then you could just quickly finish it. But if you're far from it and it's going to take a minute or two and the tzibur is waiting, you don't have to. You could stop even in the middle of a, a, a chapter. Asur Lomar that's different, different minagim when you say the Kaddish. Now, yes, the Mishnabur actually says that he, he's allowed to read it quietly with the, um, with the Chazan he could read it quietly with, um, with the Kore as well, because that's part of what he has to do. Therefore, he could, he could do it. It's once he gets the Aliyah, it's mutar for him to do that as well. Now, um, so they... Um, Ben Ishkai writes in Rav Pe'alim, he asks the question that we ju just said in the beginning. He says, how about if the Gabai called somebody by mistake? They don't realize the guy is in the middle of the Zimra. So if you know you should not, you're not supposed to, unless he's the only Kohen, unless he's the only Levi, then you call him. But you're not supposed to call him. But let's say you did that other Kohen, what a regular Shlishi is saying. You call the guy up, says the uh, Ben Ishkai, that he should go up. Chahambadia says the same thing. So already he called, it's not respectful. He already called your name. You go up, you pause wherever you are. You go up, you get an aliyah. You read the aliyah with this thing quietly and you come down. You don't say, Hazaku Baruf, right? And please, uh, Misha Barach. You don't say any of those things. You say your bracha, you read, you come back down and you continue on Zugeda Zimra. Now, how about if they called you up for maftir? The maftir is already not just the thing. You have to say the maftir, you have to read the aftarah, right? So Chaumadia writes 
that not only you could say the Birkat Torah, you could read the entire after yourself as well, right? Why not pass on that? Because it's your mitzvah. It is much better that the person that cannot properly read maftir should never buy maftir. Buy something else, right? Instead of buying it and giving it to somebody else, the the person that gets maftir has to be reading it. You know, many shuls, Sfaradim is, is mahlukit exactly what the old minhag was, but Ashkenazim and some of the Sephardi countries, they used to have a haftarot, sefer haftarot ala klaf. Just like you have Torah and klaf without the kudot, just the words, without, you know, the, the dots, without, you have the haftarah also like that. So you really need to be a baki to read it, right? And they have a professional hazan that reads it from, I don't know if Syrians have this. They don't, I don't think they have this, right? I don't think Syrians have it. The, the general minhag, the Moroccans, the whole question if the Moroccans had this old minhag or not, but certainly many Ashkenazi may have it. So the she'ela would be, many, many Ashkenazi shows don't have it. So she'ela is, is it better to get, to be mahmir for this humrah and get a class? Right? And then you have to have the Hazan read it because not everyone that gets a maftir knows how to read from a class without any dots and without any you know, traps. Right? Or is it better to do it from a regular Tanakh? Regular Tanakh and the, the person that gets the Aliyah would be the person that reads it. I believe the Alakha is it's better to forego the Humrah of having a class and have a person that gets the aliyah be the one that reads it. But if the guy's gonna go up there and embarrass himself and embarrass everyone else and take 15 minutes to read something that takes two, three, three minutes, right? Of course, better to give to someone else, even if you already bought the aliyah, but that's again, a sensitivity within the community that should be had. Let's just finish this. If you don't, how about this? Is you don't have to give the aftarah reading to somebody else. You can read it yourself. Even though that you read the zibra, because it's your mitzvah. They give the, the maftir to you, that means you read the aftarah. Therefore, you could even pause that. You don't have to pass it on to someone else, and you could do it yourself. Right? Once the chiyuv is on the tzibur, not the yachid, Another halakha would be that do you have to stop and listen to Kriyata Torah? Right? We have to have Kriyata Torah. You can't just say, you know what, we're not feeling like it today. We're just going to skip Kriyata Torah. You can't do that. It's an obligation to have Kriyata Torah. So do we say that this individual that came late, right? It's his fault he came late. Let, let him stop wherever he is, listen to Kiryat Torah, and then go on with his Pesukah Zimra. Or do we say, no, you could just read Pesukah Zimra as the Hazan is reading the Torah. So it says, and this is what comes out from Shukha Aruch, that Kiryat Torah be'etzim, smachloket if it's Chobat HaSibu, but Ayachid, we pass in, is the obligation of the tzibur. In other words, the community, the kahal, the minyan has to have a kriyata Torah. But it's not on a yahid that he has to listen to every word of kriyata Torah. In other words, if he needs to go to the bathroom, now you cannot leave when the Torah is being read. That's asu. You're like, it's disrespecting the Torah if you leave the shul, even if there are 500 people there. You cannot leave the shul when the Torah is being read. Ashkenazim are even machmir that as soon as you open the Sefer Torah for a guy to get Aliyah, you already cannot leave. Between the Aliyot, you could leave, right? In the middle of Aliyah, even if the guy just opened the Sefer Torah to say the Bracha, you cannot leave. By us, we're a little bit more mekel. So long as the Baal Korea hasn't started the Aliyah, you could, you could leave if you need to. But let's say you went to bath, you came back, you missed an Aliyah or two. You have to go now to a later minyan afterwards to catch those two aliyot you missed. The is no, you don't have to because it's an obligation. Every aliyah has to be read in the tzibur. You can't just say, you know what, the shvi is too long. We're going to just skip shvi. You can't do that. Every part of the Torah has to be read in. It's a chiyuv. It's an obligation. But 
obligation for the tzibur, not for every yahid v'yahid. So therefore, me'ikar adin, even though that's better for the guy if he's not in rush, so pause, listen, but if you're in rush and you want to do sukkot the zimra and finish up, you're not obligated to listen to the Torah. If you continue your sukkot the zimra as the hazan is reading the, the Kriyata Torah, and you get on with, uh, with your sukkot the zimra, and um, imagine the guy is a professional balkore, right? And now he's late, someone else is reading. But he knows that he just made a mistake and nobody caught the mistake. Can he pause his Pesukit Zimra and correct the Shaliyah Tzibur respectfully? What do you say? You say yes, why? He's pausing in Tefillah. You say no. You say yes, yeah, that's the halacha. A person could, could pause and be metaked the Shaliyah Tzibur if the Shaliyah Tzibur makes an error. Um, and the error, you know, it's given that the error is something that changes the meaning. If it's something that doesn't change the meaning, you're just very sensitive. No, don't do it. You're pausing. Pausing for what? But yeah, but it's fine. But if it's something that changes the meaning, and sometimes things that could change the meaning could be very subtle, right? Let's say you say ba'a versus ba'a. You hear the difference? That completely changes the, the meaning. Ba'a means she is coming, she will come. Ba'a means she already came. And you have that in, in the parashio, right? Or ha-metaher or mitaher. Mitaher is a person that's being purified. Metaher is someone that's purifying him. Very different. You have those differences. And they're ta'uyot and metsuyot. So if it's one of those, of course, you stop and you, you correct. But if it's something that doesn't change the meaning, it's just a little, little difference of, of, of pronunciation, which makes no difference in the halakha of the reading, then no, you cannot, you cannot correct because you're being mafsik for not enough sufficient of a reason. Um, we will continue this in the days to come.